Alright. There are people taking advantage of others that don't read their Bible. So we always got to read the Bible every single day to stay sharp and to watch out for deceivers. As it says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 13, Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So I want to show you an example of this. Okay, so um, this video is about why we believe that there is good there's that there is good reason to think that there is two raptures in the tribulation period okay and we've actually came up with this idea it's just we're speculating but i think it's we've got a good reason to think there are two raptures because of this bible particular bible verse in matthew 24. um in Matthew 24, verse 32, well, prior to Matthew 24, verse 32, Jesus had, uh, they had asked Jesus, what are the signs of his return? And he gives a list of, of items, of things that will happen before his return. Things yeah. like earthquakes and earthquakes, um, you know, pestilences, of rumors and uh, rumors of war and things like that. Okay. And he said an increase of all of it. And increase so there will be rumors of wars and wars and everything is just everything is increasing and we have seen in the last uh, last how many years maybe last hundred years there have been a lot of increases yeah and maybe more in the last probably 20 years that there have been tremendous increases yeah yeah so and then we get to when he when he's finished telling them all about the different events that would happened prior to his return you get to verse 32 and there he tells them to learn about a parable of the fig tree and i'll read it it says verse 32 now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that summer is nigh so likewise ye when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Okay, so let's start with verse 32. In when we started to study the fig tree, he mentions a particular season. He says that when you see, when you see that the branch is yet tender on this fig tree, and that it's starting to put forth leaves, know that summer is nigh. So he thought, why would he say anything about the particular season? What's important about summer? Mm -hmm. So we thought that was probably important. So we did search on Google and found out. Okay. Okay. Well, we found out, first of all, we wanted to know when a fig tree, when you would harvest a fig tree. And we discovered that there are two harvests for figs on one tree. There is the late June harvest during summer, and, the, and there is the early September harvest the same year, only two months apart. Mm -hmm. So there are two harvests on one tree. And what's also interesting that the first harvest is from the previous year, yeah. and the second harvest is from that year. Yes. So, which leads us also to believe that He's speaking here about two, two different groups of people. Yeah, it's two different crops, two different seasons, two different seasons of exactly. of, of development. Yet it's the harvest. Will... Yeah, these guys just went way off the rails, man. Just they just completely ignored scripture and put all their trust in Google. That's what it sounds like to me. Um. Obviously, I'm. It, this is so simple. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all 
these things. Know that it is near even at the doors. It's not talking about harvest or all that junk. Here, let me go back to here real quick. Um, let's see if we can find one of these. Uh, there, that might be a good one. That might be a good one here. Um, here you notice that these, these uh, uh, branches are tender. So if you, you know, I've never grown a fig tree, so I, I can't say with authority of, of any kind whatsoever. But the idea is when these leaves start to become tender, that's when you know summer is near. So you can tell summer is going to be coming real soon because of the fig tree and how the leaves are beco becoming tender. Am I saying that right? Or when the branches, excuse me, and puts forth leaves, excuse me. Okay, so this way we know that summer is approaching. It's real close. Also, when you see all these things that Jesus talked about, when you see all these things happening, know that the end is near. That's the parable, right? It's not about two raptures. I mean, you might as well just say 50 raptures. So if there's two raptures a year, there's two uh, harvest a year, over the next 25 years, there's going to be 50 raptures, even more. There's going to be rapture year after year after year. I mean, you could make up whatever you want. Still not what this is talking about. And I mean, this is what I mean. People are uh, taking advantage of people that do not read the Bible. And they're getting fooled. And it just might be that somebody took advantage of those guys. And now they're passing on their ignorance to others. Okay, so we read about this fig tree, this parable of the fig tree in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's see if I can even find it here. Let's see. So we read it there in Matthew 24. What do I got to do? Hit this little thing down here. All right. So Matthew 24 right there. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Maybe I should have put it in parable. All right here. Mark 13. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. You know that summer is near. All right, and so likewise, right, he's given the comparison. So in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is near even at the doors. All right, it's the same thing. It's not talking about two, three, fifty different raptures. There's only one rapture. There's only one end of the world, and there's only one uh, judgment where men are lifted up to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. It only happens one time, man. And this, uh, it really burns my butt uh, that, that people would teach two different raptures. The saying, well, if you don't survive the first rapture, then that's okay. You can make the second one. That's not in the Bible at all. All right. And then also in Luke 21, uh, the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not complicated. It's not confusing. It's easy to understand. And it's not speaking uh, mysteriously. It's very straightforward. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Okay, so, again, this is not talking about two or twenty or fifty or a thousand different raptures or harvests or whatever you want to make. You're making something out of this that's not there. It's unbelievable. Right? And so, I, I think that's all I got. Uh, just, there's just one parable. And so, if I could... Here, I guess I could do this, couldn't I? Let me do this here. In case anybody had any doubt, you know, let's go back to Matthew 24. 
my I'm gonna have to do it this way, you know. Let's do it this way. Okay, so Jesus is asked, uh, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he gives all these descriptions and he says Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This is the end of the world. This is judgment day, the great day of the Lord. This is when the harvest comes, when the sheep are separated from the goats, right? When we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord Jesus Christ and those down below are at our feet and they are the enemy and they are made a footstool and this is when we go to Genesis 3 when God tells a serpent that thou shall bruise or it God says it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel let's do it this way so this is when Jesus Stamps, stomps out inequity. It stomps out uh, all wickedness forever and ever. This is the great day of the Lord. This is judgment day, and this is the end of the world. The end of the world that we live in now. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his hill. This is prophesied from the very beginning. All right, so this is the end of, there's not two of these. There's not Jesus going to stomp on the head of the serpent twice. It's going to happen one time. That's all, that's all it needed. Okay, so this idea of two harvests or two um, raptures, it's nonsense. And the, <laughs> these guys, they go on for 25 minutes talking about this made-up fairy tale. That does not exist in the Bible. So my main uh, point here is just read the Bible every single day. Don't let nobody deceive you. Okay.